Hello everyone, welcome to the 27th episode of the Miss Chocolate Talks. Uh, we are the Miss Chocolate Endeavors, and this is our podcast. Uh, today, we've got ourselves a little special guest with Tyler. Tyler, would you like to introduce your guest, or guest, would you like to introduce Tyler? Whatever you want to do, <laughs> go for it, man. Well, well, I think since, you know, most people are more familiar with Tyler than guest, guys, this Nobody is gives Robert? a shit about Tyler. Robert, I, know. <laughs> I know. We all know. But hey. Hashtag fuck at T. Novak. Is the trending? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, or you could just go buy the control room collection, but like you know, Ooh, either way. Baby. You could. Yeah, uh, go. So this is Robert. Robert's my buddy from Kennesaw State University here in uh, in Kennesaw, Georgia, where I'm just adjacent to. So um, hi, Robert. Hi. Welcome. Glad Welcome. To be here. Glad to be here. Ah, uh, so <laughs> you're about to find out how fucking stupid we are real fast. Um. Really bad. <laughs> this will be yeah. Well, got a little taste of that already, but yeah, you met uh, mom. Trevor, where the fuck are you? Tell everybody you are not in your normal camera angle slash room. Where are the dogs? Where are your dogs? The dogs are in good keeping. That's all that matters. But where are they? They're at home on the couch, probably sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> they always do. They're in. They're in doggy heaven of their own sorts. Basically, they uh, on everywhere. the couch. They have. <clears throat> They have what we call the world's greatest dog sitter looking after them. Nice. Uh, this lady, Christina, who we hire every time. She single-handedly says that Lexi and Allie are her favorite. Um, so she says, she says, if you ever need them to be watched, I will cancel people to watch Allie. Aww. <laughs> Aww. That's, That's a good dog sitter. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not even done. She Every time she goes over there, she will send us pictures uh, and videos. Aww. Every time, every night, she tucks them in. <gasps> wow. Like, she That's takes adorable. them out, she takes them on the night walk, and then instead of being like, okay, good night, and leaving, she gets them onto the couches, she gets the blankets and tucks them in, she gets the pillow all nice, and then she comes back, and they're in the same position. Like, oh, I could <sighs> die. I do die, because she sends me pictures. Die. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so, no, I am in the Virgin Islands on the island of St. Croix, uh, nice. in tropical, I mean, literally, like, the definition of tropical, like, this, yeah. I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm outside, there's fucking palm trees with coconuts falling, um, you drive on the left. Oh, oh what? Interesting wow. Fact. And it's a U.S. territory? That's a, that's a time. But when cars were introduced to this place, it was owned by, I think, England. Oh, okay. I don't know. So all the different cities on this island were built during different people owning it. So all the architecture is different. So like one city is very Spanish, another one's very French. Like it's really weird. Um, what side is the wheel on in the car? It's all the same. So they're American cars. They're American imported okay. cars. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you that, sit on that. That sounds dangerous. <laughs> you know, because can you like a... not see half the road that way? <laughs> No, it's about the same. It's just a little freakier. Like, you have to, um, like, just driving is not a big deal. It's coming up to, like, an intersection. Like, yeah. you, turn, you turn left on red. And, yeah, whoa. So oh, geez. Yeah. Whoa. And when you make oh, a right geez. turn, because you're in the left lane. And then when you make a right yeah. turn, it's a wide right turn, like, over to that uh -huh. other left lane. So it's, uh -huh. but when you think about it, it's the exact same. Just, quit you know yeah um it's just really weird because sometimes you'll go into a turn and you're like that guy's coming to hit me and you're like no he's in his lane i'm trying yeah. to hit him like yeah um, <laughs> uh, so that's, that's just a lot of destruction is what you're saying <laughs> yes but that's not even the most dangerous part the most dangerous part with driving are all the potholes Ooh, oh yeah okay. potholes be bad yeah um yeah. popping tires shit Damn, like that dude. Are are you in a more touristy area? Uh, not really. I'm okay. Kind of. So the whole island is so small. There's only like twenty thousand people. Okay. Um, wow. And uh, so the way it is here is like there are resorts, and then there are like I'm in like I guess an Airbnb kind of oh, deal. Cool. Um, yeah. Like these are houses that are so big, like they used to be villas or something, and then. They have they have names like this house is called Sea View Play and like or Sea View Place 
and then it's like so i'll be at a bar and they'll be like where are you staying i'm like oh it's sea view plate and they know what that is um dude i, I wow. was hoping you were gonna call the house like fred or something i mean i can't <laughs> like, i'm staying at fred i don't know how the house oh, identifies fred. it could be a it could be a jessabelle um you never know that's true i did not mean to assume your house it could mm -hmm. be a xenomorph um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, Tyler yeah. knows all about those now. <laughs> I do. Thanks, thanks, boys. You're, You're welcome, to Greatest franchise, man. So good. Um, yeah, VI. I still gotta see Predator. <laughs> you haven't seen Predator? Yeah. Well, no, because it's not on Netflix or Amazon. So, like, I uh, I'm a cheap bastard, and I haven't paid four dollars to watch it yet. Yo, as soon as I get back to Toronto and I'm bored and alone in my little basement, wishing I was in the land of the free, surrounded by maple syrup and moose, I'll go ahead and pay four dollars. Hey man, the moose will kill you. Yeah. I mean, the, the moose and the predators work together. You gotta be careful. Oh but my god, you... I, I never even thought about that. <laughs> I, I think once you get temporary residency, the moose the moose permit you to ride them. I think mm. that's. Which, that's what's coming. That's what kind of cool. Plural for moose. Meese. Yeah. It is not meese. It is actually meese. It is, yes, it is. It is meese. How do you spell that? M-E-E-S-E. -E -E. Are you lying to me? <laughs> no, nah, I don't I think he's I wouldn't do that. <laughs> now, Trevor, we can't see you right now on Skype. Because I guess your internet's oh, a little poopy. So if you're giving us a suspicious look, I don't even know. I am. That, let I it be known. It. <laughs> let it be known that my face looks like this. Ah. Suspicion. <laughs> oh, the glasses have tilted down. That's how serious this is. Dude, when you do the tilted, uh, the tilt down, you definitely embody a particular celebrity, and I can't... Oh, no! It's the guy in... Um... Okay, so there's a band from Kennesaw, Georgia. Dude, you might uh, might have missed this chapter, Kennesaw, called Tree Fort. They're like an old punk band, but this guy used to run an all-ages venue. And they released a song called Pencil Thin Douchebag Beard when I was in high school. <laughs> and the main guy in that video looks exactly like you when you put the glasses down a little bit. Am I the Pencil Thin Douchebag Pencil bag? Thin Douchebag Beard. Yeah. Did Beans ever play with this person? Beans is fully aware of this person, but, like, <laughs> this guy Lee might be, oh, man, I don't know, 45 or something. But, like, oh, wow. what was funny about this venue is it was, like, the most supportive, amazing community venue, all ages. It was staffed by, like, high school students. But the owner would show up every Friday and Saturday at, like, you know, he must have been 40 and he's a big guy, big old yeah. beer belly, like 250, 300 pounds, just smashed. Oh. And he was just super friendly, just talking to all the high schoolers, talking to all the parents. It was, uh, it was a unique vibe. But yeah. um, that the venue Swayze's, we were discussing it with Beans. Yeah. yeah. They closed. Swayze's okay. is no more. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Well, maybe R. I. P. something Swayze's. good in there. Like Swayze's two. They... <gasps> Swayze's two. They they put a vape shop in. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Yeah, I mean it, uh, it's yeah. Not even like a same weed clientele shop. to be fair, huh? Not even like a weed shop. We're in Georgia. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I mean, they might sell CBD, but... <laughs> so, here's one. That reminded me, going across the country with my mom, going from Denver back to Georgia a few weeks ago, yeah. there's this, like, little old lady shop called Grandma Horners. And they're famous for, like, having a little cafe and selling all these, like, little old-time, like, 1940s era, like you know, cute little Cracker Barrel type goods. Yeah. And there was one billboard <laughs> that was the same old picture, Grandma Horners, and in the corner, now selling CBD. Mm. Just oh, like, wow. what? Grandma <laughs> Horners is selling CBD? <laughs> Jesus. And of course, train. you know, here's my mother, Just that's just not right. That's, that's not the spirit of Grandma right. Horners. 
Yeah. Bro. Don't you have some Tucker Carlson to watch, Mom? Like, fucking <laughs> give him a break. Jesus. Tucker ended seven minutes ago, and uh, Robert helped me escape that fate tonight. <laughs> Dude, I, uh, I got CBD ice cream while I was here. And uh, I walked in That's the ice cool. cream shop, and I said, you can put CBD in ice cream? And they're like... Oh yeah. <laughs> Put a lot <laughs> oh yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it was really funny. I, that was my first question. I was like, "You can do this?" And they go, "Yeah." And they didn't literally put it in the ice cream. They just kind of drizzled it on top. And they're like, "Just mix it in." And I was like, "Okay." What? <laughs> yeah. I was like, "All like right, green cool. slime." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> yeah. You don't really I taste. Mean, I. I saw an uh, um, like it was a meme, but I think it was real to be honest. Some random restaurant that had on their like menu on you know like on the side of the restaurant, big font, CBD chili now available. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now, guys? Chili. But, chili. I'm, I mean, maybe I'm just old fashioned, but maybe I don't. I don't. I don't get the point. But okay, hey. I mean, I get the point, but I don't get why you need it in your chili. Well, call me old fashioned, but <laughs> I I like my chili to be weedless. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I just I, I just want it to be psychoactive chili, personally. Yeah, I, 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 I'm just thinking of like, like really, who is that for? I I guess it's like maybe if you're like like a regular to your you know you've got your your 20 to 50 CBD milligrams every morning. You pop them real fast during breakfast, and you're good to go. Like, maybe it's for the guy that forgot to take his supplements. He's like, real you know quick, what? Open yeah. my beer with this. <laughs> oh, there you go. Very What's good. It? Ever That's since his little... Austin and we didn't have the oh, bottle damn. opener, and I used the lighter, dude, I've gotten really good at it. <laughs> okay, so. There was the one night that you crashed, and one of those just blessed little sweet waters that you gave me all the way in Texas. I must have sat there for like 20 to 30 minutes, just like destroying Craig's lighter, trying to open that <laughs> bottle. I just gave up and I stole one of your beers. That was the alternative. <laughs> Didn't work. <laughs> you were asleep. <laughs> that was the night we were trying to look at North Korea in Google Maps. That's true. That was a classic one. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. Turns out there's a small tourist destination part of Pyong Pyongyang that Pyongyang. you are allowed to uh, to Google Map, but you yeah. you can't go everywhere. You can't go nope. to most of it. Nope. Hey, I watched. Uh, that was kind of cool. <laughs> what was that movie? The Interview. Yeah. No, I, I've I, seen that. I know what North Korea is like. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Craig, continue. I think I, I interrupted you. this point i honestly have no idea where i was going or where we were in that conversation i think we were talking about how brother i think we're talking about how good my shirt looks oh yeah that's a that's a good looking <laughs> shirt that's well it's, it's all about the socks and the shirt you might as yeah. well uh it is show that cover off to our audience it there is you box. go Oof. <laughs> yeah bro baby this guy, vacation mode engaged. Vacation we mode have 50 engaged. 50 to 60 weekly viewers. We're showing this off to a broad audience. Yeah, <laughs> brother. You know, 50 to 60 people. Put that many people in one room. No, yeah. I'm content yeah. with that. That's yeah. a good time. No, that's that's, 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 uh, that's beyond COVID restrictions in Canada. We have oh, reached beyond have the COVID restrictions. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and we appreciate every single one of you. I'm impressed because I know it's not my family watching. <laughs> Same. <laughs> and that's what makes well, me laugh. I had, there was a, there was an instance when I was talking to my uncle out in Kansas, um, same guy who rebuilt the Beetle with me, okay. and I was telling him about the podcast, and he's going on like, "Oh, that's that's really great. I'll uh, I'll have to sit your your cousins and I down." It's like you know what? Don't <laughs> don't do that. Let's just How don't do cousins? that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, like you know, twelve and fourteen or something oh, yeah, like that. Yeah. Just like, We're let's perfect. Just maybe not. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Twelve and fourteen. We barely aged beyond that mentally, at least. Well, yo. So I went back and, uh, and I watched what happened after I left the podcast last week oh, for my little yeah. meeting. Yeah. Wow, that was intense. Tyler yeah. disappears. You know who really needs to be alive again? <laughs> uh, Mussolini and like Hitler. It's like what the fuck, Will? <laughs> 
I didn't. That was, that's what happens you, when I leave the room. Am I the here, godly influence? Here's the thing, though. You, you saw the... You saw the latter half of that that I could still show people. You didn't see the oh, the no. ten minute. Yeah, I w- I was oh. off on potty break for like seven or eight minutes, and I'm just like, I, I'm watching the playback, and I'm like, what the fuck are they saying right now? <laughs> Dude, me and Will, oh. you and God, and I, I don't, I don't know what happened. I was just here. like, we're in a warehouse, if they just and that's Hitler the water back. cooler. Let's give it like 20 to 30 <laughs> some seconds. stupid No, shit. you're fine. Uh, Trevor's frozen. I'm oh, back. and he's back. Hey, you're back. You're back. Sorry, I was laughing so hard that the Skype <laughs> told me to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I don't that know what happened. That was your favorite FBI agent warning Jesus. you. Christ, yeah. That was, yeah. that was right, man. Craig left, and I don't know what happened. Me and Will just started talking about all sorts of shit. And, like, Craig comes and sits back down, and he's like, what the fuck did I just walk in on? Like, <laughs> and we kept going. Yeah, it was really uh, educated in a couple of minutes. Yeah, that was, um... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I highly recommend oh, yeah. all viewers think about it. I don't know if I'm going to encourage that. I'm not going to encourage anything. <laughs> we're not encouraging anything. All we're saying is think about it. Have the thought. That sounds like you're encouraging something. That's- <laughs> yeah, no, say. Have the thought. Laugh at it. Huh. And think about it. And then forget it. <laughs> we were just talking about how life is transient, and what is will not be. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. The this, laugh about this it. literally couldn't be more true. So, um, that was uh, that was last week, which was yeah. fun. Uh, it has been a while since I've talked to you guys. Now I think about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's been like two weeks in in the real about world that is behind the camera. <clears throat> yeah. Um, which is fun. And that's well, it. I... And that's our <laughs> podcast. Thanks, guys. Uh, yo, I want to I wanna know. Um, look, I hate to say it, but we all agree. Craig, the jeans, man. <laughs> the jeans yeah. on the beach. I'm impressed. But at the same time, I'm upset, but it's hard because I'm oppressed and upset. Uh, I'm proud of gotcha. you, but I'm also... I, I'm I like, mean, the... he's so hardcore. Like, he is. He's wearing fucking sweatshirt and jeans on the beach. Well, like, I was going to comment the same way that we were walking around in Chicago sweating our asses off with Craig yeah. in the same getup as the beach. Fake business. I love it. It's it's a uh, it's a it's a lifestyle choice. This no, guy's committed to style. Let me, no, no, no. Let me, it's, it's just, uh, I don't know, man, because you were sweating super bad one time, and we said you want to change shirts. You said, "Not nah, just put another shirt over it." <laughs> you know, my shirt. That was, that yeah, was that the was, video. That was the music video. But <laughs> no. That, now the that, whole audience gets to know that Craig's wearing my shirt in the music video yeah. that doesn't exist yet. Yep. That that doesn't, be, this concept doesn't exist. To be Don't fair, to those were also very... So I've, I've realized that in like a natural like setting, jeans, sweatshirt, doesn't matter. I'm going to be fine. It, it doesn't matter the temperature. It doesn't matter the time of day i'm usually just cool right um that i think what that was at the the shoot was i'm so anxious about are are we gonna have enough time to get everything done in time the people you know the the place was hot as i was gonna say not for anything that place was hot as shit (laughs) yeah like no no air movement yeah we were in a uh an undisclosed, very hot, similar to this location with no AC. Yeah. 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 And, and it hot as ball. It was just one of those hot, hot as ball. Yeah. We did one take, and we were like, "We got to turn this AC on." Yeah. Wow. And they did bless those people. Yeah. No. It Thank was. It you. was great. Jeez. It was just those are exactly the kinds of like 
places and situations where like I will sweat because it's it's more of like a I don't know it's like a tick for me like I start getting real anxious and then my body just wants to start shooting liquid out like mad it, yeah I, I, I don't really get it um, well, I mean man, I you have, remember the uh, what I was just gonna say Trevor you weren't there for the run you didn't see us on that run but uh the first run I was on man I was just sweating like a oh dog yeah oh you every yeah. show but it was for like so a week out. Horrible. Yeah. It was it was a bit brutal. That was the yeah, summer was... tour. <laughs> yeah. Like summer was the key summer. word. Like j yeah. beginning in July tour. Yeah. Is it sad to say it's know. actually been cooler here in St. Croix than in Texas? I don't not believe that. Yeah. Yeah. That and plus you guys gotta have a good bit more um like breeze coming off the ocean and shit like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you're uh, you're experiencing the life that Will experiences daily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except for you have electricity, unlike Will at the current moment, which is why he isn't here. <laughs> well, I've also well, been playing... He usually has electricity. We're not <laughs> saying Usually. <laughs> I think he usually has electricity. <laughs> um. <laughs> they only turn it on for the podcast. <laughs> no more for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have been playing uh, disc golf every day. Oh, nice. Nice. And then my cousin was like, why are you going every day? I'm like, because I'm on vacation. Why would I not go do what yeah. I like to do for fun when I'm off every day when That's I can? So I've been playing pretty good. Cool. Hot, Who are you so. playing with? Just family and such? No, I, so I've gone four times so far. Uh -huh. And I've gone twice by myself and twice with Sean. Okay. And actually... Um, Yesterday, Sean brought Miranda. Um, that's a lie. Miranda came both times, but specifically yesterday, Miranda played. Oh, okay. And she did really good. Everybody did really nice. good. Yeah. I love disc golf. It's just the poor man's golf. It's just golf with the disc. Yeah, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't had to pay shit. Dude, how much do you think a round of golf would cost on this <laughs> island? You know, like. I don't even want to know. Probably like a hundred bucks a person. Um, plus golf cart and green fees and all that. Yeah, I just, I just walk on like, how much for the disc golf? They're like, oh, just go play. I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> just yeah. Play. So how do they do it? Do they set up like a, like, how, like how does that work? They, they literally, so this is a golf course. And this golf course in particular, one, it has a really nice view of everything. But mm -hmm. it's... um. It's built like there's condos kind of all along it for people, okay. like on the course. Like you could like if you if your big thing was golf, like you could stay at these condos and like you literally wake up and just get in the golf cart and go. Um, okay. You don't have to do any of that shit. But just along the course, they have uh, a disc golf course. Like yeah. Like whereas like yeah. hole one and shit for the golf course goes like around this way, the disc okay. golf course goes like the other way. Okay. Um, and it's kind of mixed in. There's a couple of holes that are kind of scary to play um, if there's golfers because, like, three of them zigzag along the driving range. And so, hmm. so every time I've played, there hasn't been anybody out there, but I'm like, what if, like, six guys are at the driving range? Yeah. And i gotta, yeah. I got to play disc golf. Like, I would just imagine balls, like, flying at me. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Um. But no, it's, it, there's been nobody out there really in the morning because I'll go at like nine or ten. You know? Oh, okay. Most golfers gotcha. go at like seven, and so they're all really yeah, they're all probably gone by the time I'm there. Okay. Because um, if you go too late in the day, it's too hot. The sun's too high. And... Oh, well, I was gotcha. gonna say like, what kind of rich trouser stains wake up at six a.m. on vacation? Right. That's amazing. Well, yeah. If you gotta do shit, <clears throat> like uh, I've gotten uh -huh. up pretty early to go fishing. I've gotten up pretty okay. early to go golfing, like real golfing, not necessarily like this golf. Yeah. And then, that's really it. I don't think I've ever gotten up early for anything. There's nothing else really you got to get up early for, except fishing and golfing. Work? Fuck that. No. Um, <laughs> no chance. Only fishing and golfing. Other than that, I have no reason to wake up. Like, at all. Yeah. <laughs> wake me up at 2 p.m. Are we going fishing or golfing? 
go back to bed. I just have no reason to wake up. I'll right. sleep for eternity. <laughs> I'm done. Just <laughs> We're actually watching... <laughs> Any time is too early. <laughs> we're watching a pre-recorded video of Tyler. Yeah. He's, He's asleep right He's now. Asleep. This is a mirage. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Robert's here. He's got to start my, my oh. own fake, oh. fake I about whatever say, this is. The Tyler we're looking at is really like a... Uh, like Cortana from Halo? Yeah, and Robert's really <laughs> controlling everything. Yeah. Nice. How's it feel, man? <laughs> I was, uh, He's pretty good. I question him. <laughs> Tyler's a marionette. Robert's like, oh. oh. I have tricks. You know, when, when I think marionette, I think about NSYNC. Anyone else think NSYNC? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> NSYNC? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no strings attached? Joey Fatoni? No <laughs> one? <laughs> All right, I got you. Oh, jeez. All right, all right. There's a yeah, couple of you guys. It's an old school. Uh, uh, they have uh, the little uh, things yeah, on the, yep, the music yep. video. Way oh, back. God. That was my favorite thing when I was seven. I've come far, man. <laughs> yeah, you've come quite a way. Now I'm a master of music <laughs> technology. Who is that master of puppets? <laughs> and he said go. it. He said the key <laughs> thing. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> take a shot. Woo! Yeah, that's the what? plan. Skull. Well, so we, hey, Kirkland IPAs. Hey. There you go. By the way, the key phrase Not... wasn't master of puppet. The key phrase was oh. of. Of. Uh. <laughs> pinky up with that corona there, boy. <laughs> um, bro, I pinky up everything. If it's one thing that Patrick taught me, pinky up. <laughs> pinky up. <laughs> pinky up, SpongeBob. Pinky up! SpongeBob's in there dying, and he's like, SpongeBob, yeah. what? Pinky up! <laughs> Dude, it's when he's about to like chug all that water from the vase, and then yep. he's like, yep. like SpongeBob! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've gone back to watch some of those just glorious, wonderful episodes of SpongeBob. It's they perfect. have not lost their luster to no, me. No, not at all. But I can imagine like our parents just. What's uh -huh. wrong with my child? Uh -huh. my no, chi <laughs> I got I got lucky because my dad loves SpongeBob. He gets it, and so I remember like I'd be watching it, and he'd come in and be like, "All right, SpongeBob, like right. <laughs> pick <laughs> <Pinky> up." <laughs> there's, there's some funny shit in there, man. Like there's one where Patrick's trying to hide a donut from SpongeBob for some reason. Oh, because he took a bite of it or something, and he didn't want Pat SpongeBob to know he took a bite of that donut, and he's like. He's in his rock, you know, like, underneath, and he's like, oh, where do I hide it? He's like, uh, I know, the attic. And you see him, like, run up, run up, and he goes, wait a minute. And then he's, like, floating above his rock. He's like, I don't have an attic. And, like, he falls back <laughs> down, and he goes, oh, where should I hide it? Oh, I know, the attic. And he goes back up. <laughs> oh, my God. I, is that older? I don't remember that, that at all. That is older. That's maybe season five or six anything between okay. season one and like granted it's hard to know what season a spongebob shows from but they're from what i've kind of pieced together everything from like seasons one through like ten are pretty good one through five mm -hmm. are like the classics so everything that everyone quotes comes from seasons one through five and then for a couple more seasons it's hilarious and then from there it's yeah. just kind of downhill um, you know, I watched some modern day Spongebobs when I was out there in Colorado and uh, it, it just doesn't hit the same way. Of course so, not. It's a little, I don't know. You know don't why? Know. Because the writers are writing it for, like, it's Spongebob. It, so they're writing it. For, it's derivative. But, but before it was we're writing this adult show uh -huh. that for some reason Nickelodeon picked up. You know, like <laughs> That's what it was. It was. It was supposed to be like. That's why Squidward, like, like his nose, like, that's his cock. I don't know if you guys know that, but like, that's what that is. A squid's um, sexual appendage is located on their fucking face, and like they really emphasize that with Squidward. And then like, there's a whole. That's just one of wait, many. Wait, wait, but but all the female Squidwards also have a. Okay, look. Yeah. I can't explain that. 
<laughs> I can't explain Are you... Squidward's nose, though. And then, uh, Mr. Krabs, oh, first of all, how can you not tell, bro? The, sh the town they live in is called Bikini Bottom. Like, and then, uh, I don't know. Uh, fucking Mr. Krabs, he works in a fucking, like, crab trap. Like, it's literally... Like, everything about it is just hilarious when you really, like, think about it. Like, how did they come up with this shit? You know? Like, they... It's really fun. Now, the guy that died, the creator, he was a really big, um... What do you call it? Uh, marine biologist. Deadhead. <laughs> and a deadhead, of course, you know. Okay. But, <laughs> but he was a marine biologist, so he probably, like, just going... Think about what you're going through school, and he's probably just thinking of all this stupid shit, and just like drawing, you know. And then about one day, he's like, "I could make a show out of this, like mm -hmm. the sponge and the starfish meet a squirrel." Like, you know, like that's the stupidest yeah. fucking plot you've ever heard in your life. And then they do have a Texan squirrel. Yeah, Texans like so specific. A Texan sea squirrel. Let's not forget. Uh, you right. know, one of the the first episode. The first line is the guys talking about like ah the sea, so beautiful, and then they go where we meet our favorite character SpongeBob, and then he goes, well of course he lives in a pineapple, like like it's like what that's like the first thing they say is like oh of course he lives in a pineapple under the sea. Where else would he live? Well, I mean, come on, who lives in a pi pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> Dude, that's like the greatest trivia question of all time. To get ready to head out, guys. Robert has to uh, has to jet here. I'm gonna walk him out. Bring Robert, him back. see you, Robert. Thank you for coming, bro. Thanks, guys. It's been a pleasure, man. Of course, oh, brother. Fantastic. Catch you later. All right, dude. All right, now that they can't hear us, we can say all kinds of <laughs> terrible things about them. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Tyler's pants. <laughs> Tyler and his shirt and his. Oh, yeah. Pants and and Robert and his shirt and the way they and walk his all pants. funny and this warehouse and the amps and all silly. It's just so stupid. Is that a PV butcher combo? Ooh, I I can't tell. I I'm gonna have to ask him when he comes back. <laughs> Watch him say yeah. Yeah, right? Okay, so to answer your question from a few yeah. days ago, I did not yeah. put those strings on my guitar yet. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. The shit? Hold on. Wait, wait until he gets back cuz I'm going to try to get him convinced. I'm I'm like I'm like ready to like try and get a whole band sponsorship for these strings. They're they that make, good. I do swear they make to god. Bass strings? Yep. yep. All right, I'm done. Up until about uh <laughs> A couple months back, David Ellison was their big bass, bass uh, artist. I, for I, I <laughs> that shit. They were like, uh-uh. Uh-uh. No, I heard your video, and I remember thinking, like, uh, man, that sounds really good. Yeah, man. They were bright yeah. as shit. You were, you're not kidding. And I like they're bright. They're really bright. Yeah. So and they're things. also the 10s. The 10s I'm using. I didn't put on the 9s. I started with the 10s, and I'm just like, these work. I'm good. Yeah, I'm telling you, know? you, it's a lot easier to dole out something than to make something brighter. Yeah, yeah. Think about it, even already on my JJ, my clean tone, the bright switch is engaged. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. No. I've got, um... Who is this ugly-ass motherfucker walking down this hall? Oh, oh Tyler! Oh, hey! Oh, what's oh, up, oh. man? You know, yeah, you know, we just talk about your, your how beautiful you are, and, you know, how, um, how, uh, how you walk kind of cool, not funny and retarded like <laughs> I was thinking, but, um, yeah, what's up, dude? Hello! <laughs> okay, two things. Number one, is that a PV Butcher combo behind you? No, that's a PV uh -oh. TNT 100. Uh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> all right. So, I can explain my present location. Um, this is where all of the stuff that I could not take with me to Canada lives. In oh. this corner of this warehouse, and on the other oh, wow. side of this piece of plywood, yeah. is my Volkswagen. That is where oh, it is. Dang, bro. Cool. On the other side of that piece of plywood is your sex dungeon. 
Oh. The, my Volkswagen and my sex dungeon are the exact same it's thing. The same oh, thing. I don't know oh. why you would ascertain anything else. <laughs> my bad. But, uh, <laughs> my, I've told you, continue. I love my car. What? My vehicle and I are one. I there take the stick shift and I. <laughs> no. And he sticks the shift. <laughs> oh, hey, me anyway. too. Well, that's interesting to know that that's not what I thought it was. But uh, to be honest, I'm a little relieved because I was like, Tyler's out here looking for like guitar gear, and he's got a PV Butcher combo just right behind him, ready to go. Like dude, Tyler always, what? dude, Craig, we have to say this publicly. Tyler always seems to try to fuck us with gear. Like me and me and Craig are very open about all of what we own, and then Tyler, uh-huh. like, we've known him how long, and you'll be like, oh yeah, you didn't know I had this bass. And like, out, like five string fretless. We're like, what the fuck did you? Oh yeah, I've had this for twenty years. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, guys, when you have fourteen to seventeen bases, uh, you know, Jesus things kind of just go by the wayside. Bro, that's so funny. Things kind of fly under well, the radar. Also, so underneath the white sheet is uh, a yeah. is the world's cheapest electronic drum set. It was like a hundred and fifty dollars oh. on Craigslist, yeah. like an Alesis or something. It's literally an Alesis. Yes. Ah, there you okay. go. Okay. And okay. then I have an acoustic cab, and I have a nineteen seventy four acoustic amp head behind that ladder over there. Wow, acoustic and I have about three hundred CDs there. Four. Yeah, seventy four. You want to see it? I don't Which means see it, that's when just... acoustics were still making good gear. It's before a Guitar Center purchased yeah. Acoustic for the logo and destroyed them. Show yeah, the it's cast. When it was... Show the cast. So, oh, I'll show the cast. Hold show on. Show the cast, damn it. <laughs> ah, yes, we can get back to talking shit about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, what a <laughs> garbage, <laughs> bro, with his acoustic gear. What is this, fucking high school? <laughs> oh, bro, tr- tr- if this is what he says it is and it's that old, this this thing probably sounds fucking immense. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh wow. Huh. Wow. That is pretty cool, actually. So it's a beaut. Wow. It's a, you should it's run right a stereo bass rig. Oh. Uh, I can because that's a dual channel amp, as I'm sure you noticed. Okay. Uh-huh. Oh, then you need to run a quad Rio <laughs> rig. Okay, so I. <laughs> I have experimented with this. With a quad? And it's just... Well, with the, with the stereo. Okay. And it's just not necessary. No, dude, let me tell you. You have four <laughs> audios coming out at once. And one is clean, like DI, whatever you want to do. The other one is distorted, ever so slightly. The other one is very heavily distorted, so that it drowns out the other two. And then you have a fourth one... That is just distorted a little bit, but doused in chorus, phaser, and flanger, so that it sounds it's like your wet signal. Absolutely, yeah. well, combine all piece. four, and you get a one solid piece of shit sound. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Because think well, about uh, it, channel, well, channel three is going to be so distorted that it's just going to drown out the other. Two. Uh-huh. But four has got to have so much shit going on that you can't hear anything. Well, it's the secret. so you also uh, you also realize I have my own eight ten, so we could combine our eight tens and we could have a sixteen ten array wow. of muddy bullshit. Awesome! Wow. <laughs> I know I don't want that. Who else doesn't want that? <laughs> <laughs> Oof, man. Honestly, the idea of carrying those up the stairs alone just... Oh. (laughs) There was that venue in western Massachusetts with, like, a double flight of wood stairs. Oh, you're talking about that? I will never... In Worcester? It was past Worcester in some little town. It was really weird. I mean, Will and I almost died, but I'll never forget, like... Rolling that thing down and then walking back up, just like, oh my god, we survived that. I walk back out and I just hear, like, Will and Pete and Dovis, just like, Lo Alio! Lo Alio! Say la vie! It's just like, this, this is beautiful. I love yeah. these people. <laughs> that was Always. also the weird loadout where I tried to grab my cab, my, four, my 410, my Wagner, from 
uh, it, it was, I think it was Will and Adrian were ready to bring it down the stairs, and I told her, no, I can't let you take this, I'll take it, like, I'm worried you'll break, and yeah. then she got, like, mad at me, because I said I was worried she'd break, and I was like, you, what, it, I, am I not allowed, I, I, I'm confused right I, now, like. <laughs> I got an insert for that, man, I see that she's been, like, trying to hit the gym and stuff, and I still think she'd break trying to move that cab, huh. It's a serious cab, I, you know. I mean, I've almost broken moving that cab just because, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little fragile. That's all. <laughs> that's exactly what I mean. Now, is your Whatever. Bogner or my Bogner? My Bogner is the heavier one, right? Your Bogner is the one. Okay, so the V30 loaded 412 is probably got, I'd say, about 10 to 15 more pounds on that thing. <laughs> yeah, Damn. the V30 magnets are thick man like they are thick boys like i don't i be back nope. in two seconds guys i hear okay. a funny noise outside the warehouse at 10 at night <laughs> are we about to watch this man get murdered on camera <laughs> i hope so <laughs> <laughs> this would be the most entertaining thing uh -oh. oh god and that's it Tyler, and he's gone that's it it's the last time we will ever see or hear from Tyler, period. Oh, God. That was it. This is where the 48-hour... This is where the, the podcast ends and the 48 hours starts. Yeah, like, yeah. Welcome to CSI. CSI Atlanta. <laughs> see, yeah. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. That would be so fucking... Oh, oh he's alive! Yes! Oh, God, yay! We did it. Yay. We supported him enough to live. This is such a weird podcast. <laughs> I'm not you getting good? robbed. That's all. Oh, yeah, not okay. getting robbed. I'm all in right. a weird ass place to be at ten. I'm like the back of an industrial park against the woods next oh. to the highway. Okay. It's a weird place to be, but gotcha. I'm good. <laughs> we were just making jokes about you being murdered, so that's uh. That's appropriate. That's you where walk, I am. That's you okay. walked out of the door, and I said, "This is where the podcast ends." And 48 hour mysteries begin. <laughs> <laughs> Great. He was in the middle of filming his podcast when all of a sudden. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. He disappeared. And then it cuts to like me and Craig. We like didn't know what happened, bro. Like we were just like filming and he walked out the door and like, fuck man, he was just gone. Did you, did you ever happen to hear from him after that? No, man. He walked out that door and like he was gone walked out of life I walked out the big door <laughs> the big door yeah there you go Man. so I was briefly telling uh, Trevor while you were walking Robert out about how we're all going to be signing up for SIT string endorsements because god damn dude I just I bought some when we were in Houston mm -hmm. and uh, holy shit if they're anything on bass like they are on guitar it's a no-brainer. What, what is their thing? Are they, like, coded? Are they super round? Do they have, like, I, a, a, a shtick? I'm not going to lie. I, we so don't know. <laughs> SIT means stays in tune. And okay. I can <laughs> vouch for that. I know that. <laughs> yeah, I can vouch for that considering the fact that I have a Les Paul that never wants to stay in tune. And <laughs> I tuned it, like, twice, and it's staying that way forever now. Um, and they're very, very bright very very loud and very very clear it's it's kind of it's wild just how uh, uh, the there again this thing maybe it'll come through the mic actually like they are just they are still thing they just don't move it's great i really like it you know it's sad because i really really like the dario Yep, me but too. after that music video shoot, I can never again <laughs> trust them. It's so sad. Yeah. I fuck them, fuck them, fuck them. I broke two strings in one day. Brand new. Yeah, man. You know what, well, I mean, dude, I'm a... Oh, keep going? Mm -hmm. No, go, go. No, you go. Mine's not important. I was just about to say, I'm about to join the, the ranks of temperamental jazz master owners, so I think I could use some SIT strings. Yes, you could. But yes, keep going. We're well, not important, like I said. Oh, he's what I was going to say think... was, 
Oh, keep going, Craig. I was just going to say, I think we should just keep talking about SIT strings the rest of this episode so we can try to, like, grab some free shit. Like, here we go. What? SIT. Stays <laughs> in tune. SIT. They used it in the Dune movie. I love SIT strings as much as I love Manscaped. You know what? I think I also love SIT strings as much as I love Manscaped. That's a yeah. lot of love. That's a lot of love. You know what I really tended to love was this new Pops of the People album. Ba ba ba! Album of the week! Ba ba ba! Alright. Man, sounds so good. You imagine they must be using SIT strings. There you go. You must have recorded this album, Manscaped. So for that <laughs> album of the week intro, I chugged a beer. There you go. Very good. Next one. Next one. Next. Okay. Next. All right, you guys. So, torches. Yep. 2011. Um. Boom. Not gonna lie, a newer album to me. Uh huh. Um. Obviously, um, I sh- shouldn't have to say this. Almost everybody knows Pumped Up Kicks. It's a very <laughs> Very popular. I, I was gonna say it's weird that you decided to choose this album just so we could talk about three teeth for like forty five minutes. Yeah, like, that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically, um, yeah. No, so I got turned on to this album maybe uh, two or three years ago. Um, okay. Mostly because of the the first track, Helena Beat. Man, I love oh yeah, that. I That's love that song. That That's song a is a banger. That's a good yeah. song. And um, that song kind of like while in college and going through like um, my little drug scapade of like you know just kind of getting fucked up and going out uh-huh. and doing shit. Um, I heard that song and I, I love that line of uh, I tie my um, I tie myself up to a chair so I don't fall that way and it's like almost like a party like concept of like oh like okay like uh everything's okay like yeah. i'm fucking holding myself down like because this shit's wild and the song is literally about they said it's about moving to hollywood and like kind of falling it's it's literally about just living in the drug art scene in la and oh okay. yeah that's what that song is about so it's literally just about like hey man like if you're gonna do it like you've almost got to tie yourself down because you can uh-huh. fucking fall really deep into it like uh, mm-hmm. And uh, kind of like the modest mouse kind of shit, I felt that this whole thing was very like I forget the guy's name, Mike Foster, or something like that. The the main guy. Um, it's very much a singer songwriter kind of um, feel, but with so much electronic influence. And then I looked into it, and sure enough, the two of the other guys in the band are major synth heads, and... Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. and so that's where the band collaboration comes from. You know, it's like one guy kind of writes the song, and everyone else kind of makes it a makes it a song. Interesting. Um, but it, it's... I like this album because every single track is different. I don't think a single track off this album sounds the same. Like, at all. Um, and... I- I'll briefly interject and say the one major thing I wanted to bring up is just how I I don't know if you guys experience this when we listen to albums of the week but like sometimes when I'm not looking at like my phone when I'm listening to the album the songs will just go by and I barely notice when they'll change to the next yeah. tune like everything is clearly like these are songs Very this, obvious. this is yeah. you know yeah like really well, really this different. was a, a pop album yeah like yeah in, uh, a pop in, a, album. in the best sense yeah. I mean, yeah every song was its own event could have been mm-hmm. a single was a single yeah um well there yeah, were there no, were three great. there were three major and i mean major obviously with one of them but there were three major singles off this album and uh i don't okay. know if you guys know but uh houdini was the third one um oh, oh not cool. call it what you want no oh it was uh wow was okay LMB. Uh, pumped up kicks, obviously, and uh, Houdini um, cool. was the single. I liked Houdini a lot. I yeah, love that Houdini. song. Oh yeah. my god! I, I'll say this first. I think my favorite song on this album is Warrant. Yo, okay, uh, me too. And here, like, I listened to this in one straight shot, 
And I was going to like stop, you know, I was in the car, I was gonna turn it off, and I was like, you know what, fine, I'll listen to the last track, I made it this far. Uh -huh. Warrant, to me, blew the entire rest of the album I would out agree. of the water. I would... I've listened to Warrant probably 20 times in the last two I think, days. I, think the <laughs> I love album, it. I love that song. The album opener and closer are just dominate on this yeah. album. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, fuck man, there were a couple of little songs on here that I wasn't crazy about, but the the writing is like like at, it depends where I am like sometimes like I've been playing it out like say out by the beach and stuff to see how people react and like um it's got songs for everyone you know like the songs that I don't necessarily care for a lot of people do uh -huh. like um like Miss You is not my favorite um and then there's the other one the other love song um I would do anything for you. Yeah, which I do like, but I do think uh, a lot of people like that song more. And then you got the little quirky song, uh, Don't Stop. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, a little quirky. Uh, it, it, like I said, this whole album is everywhere. Like, it's everywhere. There's a, there's a, like, you could show any friend you have us one of these songs, and they would probably, you know, there's probably one for everyone. Um, uh -huh. And, uh, just be careful around your friend. That song is definitely pumped up kicks. You you might you might you might want to spend a little less time with that one. Now moving on. <laughs> now moving on to that. I mean, yeah. Possibly the most controversial song ever written, to an extent. I mean, it is that song is about for any public audience who doesn't know this song. Pumped Up Kicks uh -huh. has 1.6, I think, billion listens just on Spotify. Holy shit. I don't want to know how many the music video has on YouTube. Um, yeah. Very popular song. The song is about a school shooting. It is about a kid getting a gun from his dad, going to his high school, and shooting up all the other kids with the Pumped Up Kicks, which are essentially the heels on a tennis shoe. Um, oh, really? hmm. Yeah. And so it's some crazy shit. And um, they said that they wrote it because they, this kind of had nothing to do with the song, but they said they wrote this song because they wanted to write a song that hipsters would hate, but still sing along to. Ah, that's what happened. Yeah. Mission accomplished. Yeah. And yeah. everyone else. <laughs> um, wow. So, yeah, and especially everyone else. I mean, the song blew the fuck up. But, you know, it kind of goes back to just songwriting. It's just melody, 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 melody. You know, like, yeah. Um, what is the bridge section? It's the whistling of the chorus, you know? Um, that being said, having had to force myself to listen to it a lot more than I did probably in high school when it came out, it's a beautiful yeah. song. It is yeah. a great song. Fuck, man. It's, you know, it's well written. Oh yeah. my gosh! You know what hits me every time is in the beginning when that nice little synth comes in, and it kind of sets the tone. That that's what kind of gets me, and like I really enjoy it. Um, like all kind of big, like oh, it blew the fuck up, big melody, whatever. Yeah. It's a very good sounding song for a pop song. Yeah. I mean, fuck, man. Well, like, I was I was gonna comment on the actual sound of this record. I mean, for as much as they have going on, you mentioned like some of these guys were synth heads. That makes a lot of sense because there's it. It's so clear. There's a clear melody and a clear counter melody and a clear everything at all yeah. times. There's I mean, no extra good. funk for the sake of extra funk. It's just yeah. what you need and nothing else. And, yep. Speaking of pumped up kicks, um, one of the things I always listen to sometimes is like. Can I recreate this? And uh, like in terms of mixing. And yeah. one of the things that I heard that I found actually might be kind of tough, and I was the chorus, the vocals, how it's it, it's so like widespread and yeah, like yeah, like yeah. super bad. And I'm like, how did yeah. how did they do this? Like I couldn't really figure it out. Um, I, I was. It, it definitely shifts like. There's a dramatic volume difference for one. Like it, it's more than just width. It's like you're getting hit with like all of these upper, like upper mid harmonics from like whatever the fuck vocal processor is being, you know, used to like really shift yeah, everything just put that up. Yeah, shit up. out. Yeah. It's it's really weird. Like I again, my 
my experiences with this song, like I, I didn't even know about, like so Tyler that um, Three Teeth that industrial metal band. You know that, Three Teeth. You know, yeah, remember them? Okay. Yes. So I, they they cover this song on their newest album. Oh, that is cool. I, I've yeah. not heard that. It's terrifying. Like, to be honest, it is terrifying. It's a guess. Like, that's a perfect word. Yeah, it's it takes everything that makes this song like fucked up on on in a um, conceptual way and makes it fucked up in an audible way. You, three Teeth you just in general kinda... is that. Three Teeth. If, yeah. If you haven't checked out Three Teeth, check them out. They are a yeah super terrifying band. Like yeah, um, terrifying enough that they open for Tool <laughs> yeah. on tour and Rammstein and Rammstein and Rammstein. Yeah, okay. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And they do that song so much justice. Like Indeed. it's it's really fucking scary. Like and they made a music video for it and everything oh, that geez. you're just like, "Oh my god, bro. Like this is a lot. This is so much right now." You know, you and, know? and the thing with Three Teeth is like knowing them, they didn't do it because the song's big. They did it cuz they were like, "Oh yeah, we're going to really come across yeah. like the the emotional feeling yeah. that this this song... <laughs> we're going to make this scare people." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's they really pull it off. And some people um, don't like scary <laughs> shit, you know. Obviously, uh, they like yeah. pumped up kicks because it was singable. But it's like you missed the part where he's like, "Daddy came home with my package," and like my yeah. sleight of hand became a quick pull trigger. Like yeah. fucking Christ, yeah. man. Um, yeah. Um. So what? Unless is, <clears throat> what? I was just gonna say is one of those things with with torches like specific version of pumped up kicks unless you were already told what that song was about you have no chance of understanding just how fucked up it is you oh, know what no, i mean like and, and i remember when it came out like back in high school I like, okay. everyone was singing it for weeks and weeks and weeks and then really? like slowly it kind of disseminated out there like oh yeah this is kind of fucked uh, you guys uh, remember uh, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember being in high school and somebody telling me like you know what that song is about, right? And I'm like, oh no, um, I never really listened. Like I never really paid attention. Yeah, yeah you yeah. probably should. And I was like, what? And I yeah. looked into it. Like they didn't tell me; they just told me to look into it. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. my friends were assholes. And <laughs> I look into it, and I'm like, holy shit! Like, damn! Yeah. Like, this is some serious stuff. And it, to make it like, not to down it out, but to make it more serious, my school like for years. You know how schools they they pick like um especially high schools and middle schools, they pick, like, um, progressive kind of paths or, like, plans to f follow for the year to kind of boost everyone's morale. Like, they might do, like, uh, I don't know. So, I guess to give an example, yeah. my high school... We, we definitely missed that in Plainfield. I, I, I figured... <laughs> yeah. I, I, I literally, there was no morale boosting I, in Marietta, Georgia. I was going to say, I immediately looked at both of you and was like, this is in Texas. Like, Texas, <laughs> Texas is really big on pushing, like, education and, you know, morality that's awesome. through education. Yeah, no, that's great. It sounds yeah. great, so what, what I'm about yeah. to say next. Oh, all right. So, sure. um, there was a thing we did for a while where we, like, and I mean we as in everybody in my school. Like, it's, okay. it's, yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. sound ridiculous, but it, it wasn't. It was kind of popular, but... We would focus on this girl who died in Columbine, and we did this whole like you had to go to this, we had to go to this like thing where they did videos and we they talked about it and so um, and I may have been a freshman or sophomore so literally right when this album came out and uh -huh. like our the the year long theme was to like live like her who was the girl who passed who she was shot in, in columbine and oh yeah and it was because she was super positive and like she had like it was this whole thing and so we study it and then you listen to a song like this you know and you kind of it, it's it's really like to say it's walking on thin ice is yeah at, in 2011 is a big deal because yeah. and i'm sure they got i didn't even look into how much 
shit they got, but I am sure they got a lot of shit for this song. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I mean, just to think, like, would you guys write this song and publish it? You know what I mean? Like, it's not just a matter of, oh, they did it. Like, they yeah. did it. Like, they, like, right now, the three of us, let's write a song about a school shooting. <laughs> uh-huh. And then yeah. let's put it out and see what happens. Yeah. Granted, yeah. it worked ferociously in their favor. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, but like, it, it is literally like, and I, I, I know it's a crazy word we're throwing around, but to say controversial, like this really is one of the most controversial yeah. songs of all time. Like, yeah. that shit is wild. That of how popular it is is what it is. Like, the pop. Well, it's wrapped up in rainbows. It's just like it's yeah. such a positive, like, ding, ding, ding. excited the song secret. at first listen, and then I mean, you know, up. reading into this a little bit. Apparently, they wrote that, or the one guy wrote that before most of the rest of the album. And uh, the fact that they basically wrote an album and assembled a band and a team to match Pumped Up Kicks yeah. is... And then this is what they came up with. It's like, geez, they kind of... They didn't touch on anything like that again. They yeah. did it, and they got out. I okay. mean, nothing else here is like that yeah. level of... Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. What? Everything else is very much like almost happy go lucky in a way. It's like yeah, call it what you want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally the next fucking track. Like do, do you guys know uh, if they ever ventured into anything more sketchy on like future releases after this track or I do not. Okay. I did not look into it. Okay. I'm sure they were like swimming in their fucking pool full of Benjamins <laughs> like what? <laughs> <More>. <laughs> Pumped up what? what? <laughs> Dude, okay, let put it this way. If they made a dollar for every listen on Spotify, they'd be billionaires. Yeah. Yeah. If we made a dollar for every view on YouTube, we'd have fifty dollars. Like you know, like times twenty seven. Well, yeah. guys, I, I have one album sale of the Control Room collection. I've made nine dollars Canadian. Thank you very much. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> hell yeah. Oh, bro. We all know, we all know it was Craig who bought it. And you ended up having to pay him back for all the money he spent on you. I mean, it might have been my cousin, but like, you know, I, <laughs> so, we all know you, your cousins don't care about you that much. We all know that's true. That's oh. true. Oh. <laughs> no. but if, oh. if it makes you feel better. Neither do mine. Oh. <laughs> oh. I'll put it this way. I, I asked my cousin, I said, why haven't you watched my podcast? She said, I didn't know you had a podcast. I said, I told you in March. Last time I saw you. She's like, oh, yeah. And then I was like, do you really not know anything about what I do? And she's like, no, I do. I keep up with it. And I'm like, what's my band name? And they just sat there, and I was like, yeah, that's what I thought. Lame. Yeah. Lame. I mean, I, right, that was my house. Someone, someone knocked on my door. I don't know you're good. No, the the amount of times my family has gone, oh yeah, your mystical hot chocolate band. Uh-huh. It's like, oh yeah, the mystical hot chocolate band. That's a, uh huh. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's exactly who it is. Yeah, I mean, it, I've had different experiences, to be honest. I think I've had oh I've had several different experiences. Yeah, I've had some good. Ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've had mostly good, mostly good. But I remember specifically, I just walked up to my cousin and I was like, "What's my band name?" They mm-hmm. were like, "Uh," and I was like, "Really? I've been talking to you for like years about this." Uh-huh. I went on tour. I came to your city. Like, <laughs> I don't hold Probably on. Laugh. Give me two seconds. I guys, you need to see this. Like. I just just putting this out there for the sake of putting this out there. I Let's won't be able to it. show the camera, but I can definitely show you guys. Screenshot, screenshot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, how do I do that? Uh, shift I... Command Three. Shift Command Three. At the same time. Oh. I don't see anything. But Shift Command Four, and then you can draw your screenshot. Yep. Yep. Just show us. What do you got? 
Oh, God. I, I do own the Control Room Collection. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. I'm not oh, at all kidding you. You beautiful son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, they never told no. me I made that album sale. What the fuck? <laughs> no. What that means is your cousin lied. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Oh. It's okay, Tyler. I'll buy it tonight. I've heard it. I love it. I love you guys. Thanks. <laughs> well, um, well, but that anyway, makes one person. Fox and people. Uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know what? That does make one person. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to pee real quick, and then we'll talk about Fox. Cool. I'm going to go make sure I'm not getting murdered. So I keep hearing this, like, rumbly engine on the other side of this warehouse wall, and uh, it's 10 p.m. You're definitely what about to be murdered. Fuck? Hold on. You guys talking Since about then... Trulies? <laughs> Yeah, buddy. Uh, about a year ago, they put out these lemonade flavors and like strawberry lemonade and mango lemonade, and it's it hasn't been. It, it's just it's great because you can drink a whole bunch of these, get drunk, and not feel fat from all the beer you drink. Ah, that's nice. That's that's why I drink Kirkland Light. Actually, I'll I'll give you guys a little <laughs> something for the next time you come back to Plainfield. Um, so to everybody at home that. I haven't already said this too. I've started a new job. I'm working at a Ten Drops Coffee, very exciting local coffee place. Oh yeah. Um, super delicious in in-house roasting and all the other goodies. But so Ten Drops works closely with Workforce Brewing, which is like next door to Ten Drops, and apparently I get free beer from them if I so choose to partake and i was like well maybe give this a shot when the boys come in so that'll be fun that is phenomenal and what a perk to working at a coffee shop <laughs> bro there are so many perks to working at this coffee shop like the kinds of perks i'm not gonna say on air but like dude this is like the ultimate gig yeah, yeah i'm actually kind of glad you're working there because uh coffee is amazing yeah it is, it is. the elixir coffee of life. is like it's really wild. I mean, life-changing kind mm -hmm. of thing. The, the pre-5 p.m. elixir of yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've i been going there for, like, ever because I knew I knew the owners before they'd even opened because um, my buddy Chris owns, like, a music shop, and, like, I had met Chris, you know, years and years and years ago, and then, like, when they finally committed to uh, him and my other buddy Aaron, when they finally committed to, like, opening up this coffee shop... They just, they do everything right. They roast their own beans there. They source from all over the world. They've got, like, really, like, it's one of those kinds of places where they can do up the coffee four or five different ways. Uh, all of the standard, you know, kind of coffee drinks. And then they have, like, house-style drinks that are, like, delicious and just sweet enough to be, like, a flavored beverage. But, like, you can still taste coffee as opposed to, like, all I'm tasting is chocolate or caramel right now kind of drinks, you know? Um, Are but you it's referring really cool. to your uh, your Dunks caramel syrup with cream and sugar? I, just I, no, 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 no. Of not, 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 not caramel. Ideally, pumpkin spice, bitch. Yeah. Yo, we oh. had one of those pumpkin spice beverages uh -huh. that, uh -huh. that rocked my world. I will not oh, lie. Oh, yeah. They're so good. I don't... I don't even know why we bother trying having anything else ever. I, you know, I should tell Chris to just erase the whole ten drops menu. I just want pumpkin spice for everyone. <laughs> Everybody comes in, they're like, "Can I get a flat white?" You're like, "Oh, only pumpkin." Spice. <laughs> what? You heard me, stupid bitch. <laughs> only pumpkin spice. <laughs> so, are you like a? Uh, are you a barista at yeah, ten drops? Yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you're learning how to make all of the things yeah is that a wicked big challenge it's so the big step like or not the big step but like the big thing that like is just pulling off properly is this is essentially just making espresso like once you can do espresso there's a whole lot of shit you can do with it um and so far that's been going real good uh i haven't done any of like the uh what you call like um, milk art or anything like that, you know what I mean? Where like you're you doing haven't drawn or, leaves. On I haven't flat drawn lights? leaves yet. Yeah, no, not yet, not yet. Um, 
but like it's coming in time you know like he he kind of knew that it was going to be a little while you know like until i was kind of like ready to start doing that kind of stuff but even then like they were just kind of like just make sure the drinks just taste good you know like there's they're they're pretty serious about like um ingredient spec so like if there's a very particular amount of honey you need to use in something or espresso to milk or um um, um, um they they use they're, they're not super huge and just like straight sugar they use a lot of agave you know kind of stuff oh, yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. yeah so like everything is like super vital to just just be getting perfectly right and um they're just really good teachers so it, it helps because like my last shift um i was working with these two girls that have been there forever and like the one is like a, a was it like a has like a major in climate something something like like the kind of gig get, get, like gig that like she's probably not going to be at 10 drops very lo- much longer you know kind of thing mm-hmm. and the other one's about to be going to study like film uh film um I think in Georgia, funny enough, I guess there's like a college down by you that's like really important oh, for that kind of thing. Savannah College of Art and Design. That's it. That's there it. We go. There you go. SCAD. SCAD? Savannah. Well, there's... Um, you know, a Savannah <laughs> accent is very much like this. I learned that from The Office. Ah. They talk about Savannah. Savannah. It's about the molasses <laughs> flowing out of you. Out of molasses. your mouth. You got molasses Ugh. flowing out of you. God. Mo- that's where I got the Molly Molasses oh, from. Oh, Molly Molasses. <laughs> that's literally, like, that's the exact line where I was like, Molly Molasses. She's from Shabana. <laughs> well, uh, there's a scab campus in Atlanta. So. Cool. cool. <laughs> no accents here. Okay, tremendous. Well, there's definitely, <laughs> the best. you just, you, there's definitely accents. You've just happened to not pick up on it, dude. All of your I'm... friends, heavy accents. All of really? them. Really? All of them. Really? Every one. I have I no idea how you this. don't notice this. This is. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Wow. I don't know, man. I don't. I don't think I sounded wow. any different when I when I left. But uh, I don't know. who knows? Yeah. Should have should have asked asked Robert today, but uh, but Robert's gone. Oh, damn it! I didn't hear much of an accent on him. Well, yeah, he's he from Texas. Yeah. 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 Well, he's from Southern Georgia. Then he moved to Texas. Then he moved to Atlanta. Oh, so. Okay. He's just all H-town over the place. H-town baby H-town. represent. <laughs> yeah. So when I met him, he had just moved back back from Houston, and he loves Houston. I wish he could have hung out a little longer, because I remember that he's just like, yeah, man, H-town. H-town's where I'm from. I love H-town. It's just like, yeah, H-town, bud. Sick. There you go. <laughs> I don't H-town, think bud was in my H-town. vocabulary, but uh. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. dog. Uh-huh. <laughs> it is B- now. Bud's a Canadian addition. I, w- I will admit it. <laughs> is it really? God. Oh, damn. oh yeah, Bud. Oh yeah, that's, for sure. That's awful. That sounds <laughs> just fucking awful. Have a great day, Bud. <laughs> oh my god. Have you fellas ever heard of the band Low Roar? Uh, yes. yes. I've never heard their music though. Okay. So I found out about Low Roar. Uh, I want to say it was 2000 and either 17 or 18 when they first started doing, um, what do you call it? Like, uh, advertisements for the Kojima game, Death Stranding, right? Oh, maybe that's where I heard it that's from. That's a hundred percent where you heard it from. So I, yeah. I, I did the same time. And what I was going to say is that their sound to me, like you guys know that you guys know that picture of like there's like the goth chick with the black hair and then the friend with like the rainbow hair and they're in the yes. car together yeah. yeah low roar is the goth chick and foster the people is the rainbow hair chick <laughs> if you listen to both of these bands back to back because like um low roar has a new album that's going to be coming out later this month and they were dropping some singles and stuff like that i was listening to and then i went to foster the people and I was like, wait, hold on. This sounds like the same band, just happy. And, like, I, I was going back and forth. It's a weird little thing to do, but it's actually fucking hilarious. And it makes that meme so much more relatable in a well, this, musical way. You know, the um, when I was listening to, like, literally last night, I sat there listening to Warrant uh-huh. and... Um, 
and like the fifth song on Type O Negative's Life is Killing Me, like Tony, <laughs> it's called like Tony Ships or something. And just All like, right. what is, this is, this is where I am right now. That's, just, wow. Uh, <laughs> wow. That's two songs rad. back to back. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Low Roar is from Iceland. Wow. Really? Holy shit. That's a time. Yeah. They are called a Icelandic post rock slash electronic project. Oh, I like that idea. Oh, tr if you like the oh, idea, wait. you'll shit yourself over the music. It's so I'm, good. I'm ready to shit myself. Yeah. I want wait, to shit but, myself. But the, the main guy, uh -huh. I guess, is not Icelandic. Oh. It is a project by American immigrant Ryan Karazija. And let me guess, he's from, like, I don't know, Scottsdale, Arizona. <laughs> well, I don't know yet. I, I <laughs> Just, <out. laughs> What's the like least Icelandic place on Earth? Arizona. There you go. Mr. White! Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, that was New Mexico. Fuck! <laughs> that is, yes. Hey, you did say, okay, you did say, um, like, the flip and the boss of the people... Years active, 2011 to present. Oh. Hey, hey. This yeah. is their first album? Yeah, this. Yeah. Oh, Torches? Oh, yeah, my Torches God. Torches is debut album. Holy Dude, they, shit. they wrote Pumped Up Kicks before they had a career, and then they built this record to begin their career around oh Pumped Up Kicks. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's it's yeah. crazy. Oh, my God. That's, that's what makes this album so crazy, man. It's their first fucking God. album. Damn. Hold on, give me a second. I, I need to do a little McGoogle. You think, you think it'd be like their third, or like it's not? It's their first. That's really wild. Call it what you want. Uh, oh. I like the way you described it earlier, Tyler. It really is a party album. Uh -huh. Oh, 100%. Well, yeah, and you know, you were talking about how, like, every song has something different. I mean, when I was about ready, just like, all right, I'll listen to the whole thing, I'll, I'll listen to it again later. Then I sat, I mean, fine, I'll listen to Warren, I'll listen to the last song, and then all of a sudden, that bass, and just, oh, electric mm -hmm. bass, and it's mm -hmm. fat? I like this. <laughs> There's a little bit of everything, yeah. man. Everyone at the party has a good time. That's what I always say, man, it, like... You want your little love song, you want your little quirky song, you want something a little more serious, you want your hype song, you want the pop song. It's got all of it, man. Um, Warrant, though, is, I mean, holy shit, man, what it. a good song. I love it. What a great team, like, I, and they knew it, too. You know, that's why they made it the album closer. Um, they knew it wasn't going to be the most popular song, but they're like, anybody who makes it to this track is going to love it, like... Well, in, in the spirit uh, of Prague, it's the longest song, because, you know, the longest song is always the best song. <laughs> wait, what? Warren is you guys' last song? No, no, it's my favorite song. It's the last oh, song on the album. Not for me. What? Broken oh, Jaw is the last that's, song. That's because Broken Jaw was the special edition for the oh. anniversary. Broken okay. Jaw was the new tune. Okay. Which yeah, I Broken listened Jaw to. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't... It didn't strike me like the album did. All it is, you know what it is. All it is is an unreleased track from probably the sessions okay. of that album. That's fair. I respect it. I like it. Yeah. yeah. This, uh, this but just... no, warrant, warrant is the official album closer. Okay, this explains a lot because you guys are talking about like the last song, this last song, that. I'm just like looking at the album. I'm just like, guys, I've got another one. I got another one. Hello? <laughs> We're the best. There's another. The best. There's another. This is the best music. Even though apparently I can't like this band anymore, um, in 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 this interview that I'm reading on on Wikipedia, so that could or could not be real, I felt like an 18-year-old Hunter S. Thompson. Thompson. I was just diving into this Hollywood Hills subculture and taking it all in. I wasn't shy about taking my guitar out at a party. I wanted to be the center of attention. <laughs> I think I want to shoot this kid with his pumped up kicks. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's this bad. this sounds like an album by someone who would bring their guitar out at a party. I'll be honest, uh, but God damn it! I like what he did with it. Uh, here it could have gone a very different way, and it went the good way. Yeah, no, that's that's fair. That's super fair. Also, I think Trevor's frozen. Yep, Trevor has left. So. Oh, jeez. 
Alrighty. Yo, it's my album of the week, right? It is indeed your album of the week. Fuck cool. yeah, I'm not going to leave you hanging this time. <laughs> Hell yeah, this guy <laughs> taking, taking the shot. Making gains, dude. I'm making gains here. <laughs> making gains. And we still have not heard anything from William. That's I... Uh, this is a bad internet day. <laughs> this is bad internet day. Trevor will probably pop back up in two seconds. Yeah, yeah. Call it what you want. <laughs> Man, that's a jam. It is a jam. The jammiest of jams. Man, I've been I've been trying to like hold off on this uh Mayomi. I'm I'm planning on going for a run after this, so I'm being a little mindful of Drunk running is horrible. It is bad news dude i i can imagine and um i'm trying to hold off because this entire warehouse is rigged with security cameras that my dad has downloaded to his iphone ah. and one of them is right there there you go looking Say at hi, me <laughs> i'm absolutely sure that the fact i'm in his little man cave has mm -hmm. made his life mm -hmm. so <laughs> good Dude, you want to see something absolutely... Okay, whenever Trevor's back, and whenever we disconnect here, where I can disconnect the interface I'm connected to, I will show you guys what is in this fucking warehouse, and it will blow your mind. That's amazing. I, I couldn't believe it when I showed back up. Like, this, this warehouse is almost enough reason to move here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yo, um, also because... Trevor, where's Trevor? I don't know. I wonder if he just had like a straight phone death or something like that. Boom, 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 the control room collection <laughs> oh hey there you go what if you cover that song oh yeah oh there you go you want some you want some likes want some views dude want some uh, questionable uh <laughs> questionable listeners <laughs> All right, pumped up kicks, YouTube. Okay, so the primary video has 769 million views. That's nice. <laughs> Twice um, the population of the United States. There you go. That's uh, that's a lot. And there's a lot of. Oh God, no! I don't like this. It looks to me like there's a lot of fan-made music videos, which is kind of. I don't like this. Yep. Yep. I'm not a fan. Okay, I'm getting out of here. But I'm going to send the group the ultimate in... Uh, spoon key. Paste. Bam. Watch that whenever you get a chance. I'm down. You watch Trevor views it immediately. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, damn, dude. Do we, uh, do we maybe, do we close this out? I'm, I'm thinking that's an idea. Uh, I mean, we have reached the time. I mean, the last, the last five minutes was nothing, but like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they'll probably That's... get bits and pieces of it. It's okay. They'll be fine. I don't have a light. It's fine. I'll I'll just make it work. <laughs> I mean, same, dude. Same. <laughs> oh. So, you know how I told you, like, in, in lieu of, you know, we don't need to talk about it on the, pod, on the podcast, but in uh -huh. lieu of your employment, I also had that, it, like, I had an, a Zoom interview today with U of T, yeah. and they pretty much confirmed that I was going to be, like, a part-time um recording engineer at the university nice. i'm just gonna nice. like 
do stuff, basically what I already did, but like on my own in more places, on call, whenever. But the guy even tells me like, yeah, well, you know, uh, keep in mind, we do live in Toronto and uh, you're not going to be able to pay all your bills with this job. So just make sure you have something else going, at least for the next while, while things are part time. It's like, oh, don't worry. I have one foot in the world of paint. <laughs> like, and I always will. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. Yeah, and then there's like, oh, well, you know, sometimes you'll have to set up the stage, you'll have to lift heavy objects. It's like, don't yeah. worry, man. I lift paint. I can yeah. do anything. <laughs> yeah. Thick paint. Oh, dude, some of that stuff is just straight goopy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no. They, they do love their goopy. Oh, uh, jeez, boys. <laughs> All right. Well, we're just going to fuck it. Uh, Everybody. Yes, yes. You are going to announce right now for everyone and Will and Trevor. <laughs> what are we? Our are we island boys have uh, have some faulty internet, but that's okay. We're still here to bring you the joy, to bring you the news. Hell so yeah. uh, so I'm going to bring you the album of the week for next week, and we'll, we'll let the boys know. Right. Uh, this is going to be another all-time classic thing that I love, that, you know, that seems to be a theme. Uh, another amazing incident of CanCon, of Canadian content. Uh, the album of the week is going to be Wolf Parade's Expo 86. Ooh. So uh, let's try some of this from Spencer Krug and the boys. I have no idea what this sounds like or what it is, so I'm I'm interested. Get ready, it's uh it's it's a good one. It's a time. It's a time. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very tired. This has been a time. That's been a time. Robert being on has been a time. <laughs> William not having electricity <laughs> to be on the podcast is a time. Trevor vanishing from life is a time. <laughs> We're sometimes just having, you gotta vanish. <laughs> sometimes you just got a time. Don't know what to tell you. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching. We have been a couple of assholes sitting in a room in a warehouse talking about time. Doing finger guns. <laughs> Doing gotta finger gotta pick guns. up the finger guns for Trevor. Oh, there we no. go. Yeah, yeah, there you go. He'll appreciate that. Um, we'll, uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye, SIT strings. Manscaped. Manscaped. <laughs> <laughs>